The latest CBS News battleground tracker poll found views of President Trump's handling of the coronavirus outbreak are underwater in two competitive contests. In 2016, Mr. Trump won both North Carolina and Georgia. This year, those races look close. Former Vice President Joe Biden is up by four points in North Carolina. Democrats have not won a presidential contest there since 2008. And in Georgia, the presumptive Democratic nominee is up by just one point, a statistical tie with President Trump. The last time a Democrat won there was 1992. For more, let's bring in CBS News Elections and Surveys Director Anthony Salvanto. Hi there, Anthony. So the Trump campaign is launching TV ads in early voting states, including Georgia and North Carolina. How crucial is it for President Trump to win those states in order to get those 270 electoral votes? Uh, hey, Elaine, they're both a critical part of his map. You know, when I say map, I mean the electoral vote contest. It's the states that decide the presidency. And as you mentioned, North Carolina and Georgia have both been essential for Republicans to have really any chance at winning the electoral college. Now, in the case of Georgia, as you noted, it's been a long time, since 1992, since a Democrat won there. What you're seeing in that state is views of the president's handling of COVID really weighing down his poll numbers. And you're also seeing this, which is a larger story in, the, in this election. In metro Atlanta, as well as in other large cities around the country, the suburbs around there have been moving a little bit more towards the Democrats. They used to be solidly Republican. But in the last couple of cycles, we've been seeing that movement. The Democrats have been counting on that part of the electorate to help swing states. And we're seeing it here. Sometimes you see this sort of encapsulated by us talking about voters who hold college degrees. They've been trending towards the Democrats. You look in particular at white women who hold college degrees. Joe Biden has more than a 20-point lead with them in North Carolina, for example. And those are places the Democrats are trying to use to swing some of these states and to put them into play lane. Right. So how are things shaping up for Democrats? You know, Democrats are leading in some of those key races that could help decide who controls the Senate. What about Georgia and North Carolina for the Democrats? How's that looking? Ah, the Senate. Yes, yes. Now, in the case of the Senate, we've got in North Carolina, we've got the Democrat extremely competitive, in fact, running ahead of Joe Biden in that race. And in Georgia, we have an extremely close contest. Now, those are both contests that the Democrats would like to try to flip, the Republicans, of course, like to try to hold on to, in order to, and the Democrats are going to try to take back that Senate majority. What is interesting to me about this is that in the case of North Carolina, you see the Democrats' Senate candidate running ahead of Joe Biden. By ahead, that's something to watch. That means he's getting a larger percentage of the vote. So he's been able to swing a few more of those, as I mentioned, those key Democratic constituencies. And that's, that's really driving part of this vote. It's obviously a key race to watch. And the one in Georgia is going to be interesting, too, because there's two Senate races there, actually. The Democrats are going to look to pick up at least one of those and then hang on or maybe try to pick up other races. We'll watch everything from, let's say, Montana to Colorado. As we go forward, the Senate story is going to be really, really important, too, Elaine. All right. So, Anthony, let's talk about the voting process in the middle of this pandemic. What are people in Georgia and North Carolina saying about how they want to vote? Okay. So, you've heard the political rhetoric around mail voting. Well, some of that appears to be seeping into the electorate because Democrats are saying that they would prefer to vote by mail, especially if they haven't already, more so than Republicans are. But on a larger public policy matter, Democrats are more likely to say that they think it should be easier for more people to vote by mail, and Republicans less so. So in the case of, let's say, Georgia, where 77 percent of Democrats say they think it ought to be easier to vote by mail, only 30 percent of Republicans say that. 
This is really interesting to me because, number one, we're going to watch large numbers of mail ballots all through this election. There's probably no bigger story than whether and how people can access the polls and or vote by mail. And then the other part of this is, who does that affect? Studies have shown that mail balloting hasn't really disproportionately impacted one party over another. There's no real advantage so far. But what happens if more Democrats decide to vote by mail and then more Republicans are trying to vote on Election Day? Does that lead to longer lines? Does that advantage one party over another? Those are key questions going forward. And right now, in the data, we see more Democrats, as I said, trying to or saying that they prefer to vote by mail. And that'll be a big story going forward, Lane. And Anthony, if you have more people choosing to vote by mail, some states could conceivably be counting mail-in ballots for days or even weeks. Now, you recently told The New York Times that you have moved away from using this measure that's known as percent of precincts reporting. What exactly does that mean, Anthony? And how do you plan to report results? So when people look ahead to election night, you might recall, especially for political junkies out there, that as the votes come in, we yeah. say it's 20 percent of precincts reporting, it's 30 percent of precincts reporting. Well, this year, because so many people are voting by mail, it's really going to be much less applicable to talk about precincts reporting, in other words, where people are going to vote, if there's giant piles of mail ballots sitting there waiting to be counted. Those aren't always tied to a precinct, right? So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to talk about the percent of expected votes statewide. So if we think there's going to be a million ballots cast and we get reports from state officials that that's how many they have on hand, that's going to be the number that we're shooting for as that count comes in. You see 20 percent of expected vote, 30 percent of expected vote, because you've got to incorporate all that mail voting. And so what we're trying to do here is give you the right picture, but also take the audience through what's happening as this entire process is changing. All that mail vote, all that probably early vote is going to be counted for the most part, but it may not be counted at the precinct level. And that's part of inside what's happening with all these changes for the election alignment. Really critical context there. Anthony Salvanto, thank you for helping us understand what to expect come November. Really appreciate it.